Howdy folks, today we'll be meditating on the hanging buildings of Avatar The Last Airbender's Western Air Temple. As I've been revisiting the series recently, this wonderful and head-spinning piece of architecture raises a bunch of questions and, well, let's just see if we can answer them, because... We just like architecture. Now, to give you the Cliff Notes version of the third and final season of Avatar, after the first attempted attack on the Fire Lord, the Aang gang retreated to formulate another plan and for the Avatar to finally learn firebending, their choice in the hideout, the Western Air Temple. Uh, while there, the team is ambushed by the assassin, Sparky Sparky Boom Man, Zuko is accepted into the team, and lastly, they're flushed out by Azula, and this pretty much sums up the events at the Western Air Temple. But of course, as with most notable locations in the Avatar universe, it is jaw-dropping. While the other directional temples find their perch in the mountaintops, mirroring real-world inspirations, the Western Air Temple flips this on its head. So let's spend the next few minutes on the Air Temple's architectural expression. Now, obviously, the architecture draws inspiration from real-life temples that dot the globe with a shape that closely mimics Asian pagodas that we've talked about on the channel before. And this makes sense as the tiered system has a wonderful geometric aesthetic. However, the Western Air Temple appears to be made of a stone-like material, unlike the Japanese pagodas, which we noted tend to be made of bell, bell. I mean, wood. Some common comparisons for the Air Temple come from Buddhist sites in Tibet or Bhutan, like the Paro Tsatseng, also known as the Tiger's Nest, uh, which nestles a similar form into the Himalayan mountainside, but there are several structures that embed themselves similarly, like the Hanging Monastery of Datong in China, or the Puktal Gompa in India. But the Western Air Temple is also so expansive, like the Palata Palace in Tibet. So what probably makes the Air Temple most unique is that the structures hang upside down. <laughs> Did I not mention that yet? Really? Huh. Bad jokes aside, this is the reason we're talking about the temple. I mean, the other three Air Temples aren't too dissimilar from the Himalayan examples already given, but nothing is anything like the building suspended upside down from the roof of a rock formation thousands of feet above a ravine below. But is that right? And I don't just mean that these structures are oriented upside down. There are many gimmicky buildings like this across the world that aren't internally different from standard architecture. And as a side note, many modern skyscrapers could be flipped upside down and have literally no aesthetic change. I'm looking for a structure suspended from above that is open to air below. And a pretty decent example of this is the 2022 addition to the Hotel Hubertus in South Tyrol, Italy, designed by the architecture firm NOAA. This gravity-defying architecture cantilevers an entire spa, pool, sauna, and all nearly 50 feet above the ground below, and the expression perfectly matches its surroundings as the gabled hub of huts mirrors the alpine mountains in the distance, an incredible sight to be sure. But even still, despite hiding serious structural work somewhere in there, the NOAA-designed spa just anchors down to the ground below like every other building ever. And now that I think about it, it's not too dissimilar from a suspension bridge, which hangs the bridge deck from tall pylons, which again, anchor to the ground below. Okay, okay. I, I know I've taken forever to get to the point, but to be precise, outside of Avatar The Last Airbender and maybe the Imaginary Landscapes subreddit, I really can't find any examples of architecture suspended quite like this. It's borderline M.C. Escher, uh, certainly bizarre. But within the show, the Western Air Temple isn't just played as a one-note wonder. I mean, doesn't this, more than many of the other temples, look like a meditation complex for airbenders? The fact that the suspension exudes weightlessness. Uh, transporting across the temple would seem to require walking on air, although there are bridges. It, it just feels like the Air Temple. And its unique architectural space even adds serious consequences to the fights that occur at this temple, with a fatal drop just feet away, raising the stakes as we run headfirst into the series finale. So with all that said, I just can't speak highly enough of how creative and immersive Avatar's Western Air Temple is. But obviously, this concept poses several structural and architectural challenges, so without further ado... We have a whole temple to see! Zooming in on the individual temple buildings, the first notable feature is that they have large balconies at each level, which act as the inverse of what would be the eaves of the pagoda massing, and likely there's even more balcony square footage than interior space. I suppose that this could make sense for the nomadic airbenders, assuming there's any interior space at all. Like when Sparky Sparky Boom Man demolished one of the temple structures, we get a glimpse of a solid material across the whole section which makes me think not all of these might be hollowed out, or the artist didn't consider some YouTuber was going to nitpick the three frames where the temple constitution is revealed. 
So if I'm to believe the hanging temples are mostly solid, then they're kind of like giant stalactites hanging from the roof of a cave. Not that it makes an incredible amount of sense. I mean, as far as in-world logic goes, it might appear to be the work of earthbenders, which, funny enough, the DVD commentary does sort of suggest. Another feature of the temple is the innocuous fountain near where the gang sets up shop, which suggests that there is some sort of plumbing system, but since the water falls from up above, it's more likely that the surface water on the ground above the temple pools up and drains into this location, but the less we think about plumbing systems, the better. Of course, with the On Structures channel, we have a proclivity for the structural systems, and since we have a reasonable in-universe explanation owed to the earthbenders, I thought it'd be fun to investigate this a bit more realistically, so let's do some structural analysis. Structural analysis is very boring. Wait, N Natalie, please, don't, don't, don't tell them that. Get out of here. As with most structural system investigations, the material selection is usually based on what would be the least expensive, dictated by both assembly costs and material costs. Even more so in this case, as we'll have to transfer the whole weight of the building in tension to the roof of the cave above, and at least in my practice, if I have any structural elements hanging in pure tension, we tend to assign a greater factor of safety to the connection design, uh, just to be sure. So first off, I feel pretty good about kicking out concrete, even though it's a crude form of earth bending. if you really think about it. The main reason being, if the concrete were to crack at all, which it almost always does, then the only thing to hold it up would be the tension reinforcing steel, with the concrete being literal dead weight. And similarly, uh, masonry is out, as it's just concrete, but worse. Any masons out there can let me hear it in the comments. Next, let's talk about wood. This one I struggled with for a bit because it is far and away the lightest structural material out of the ones listed and was clearly used in the precarious hanging temple at Da Tong, which I will add has been around for over 1500 years, so there is good precedence for it. Uh, the hanging connection above could be achieved by splicing the wood with an embedded steel anchorage, but this would limit the flooring and facade to a wood material of sorts since even the weight of a stone veneer would likely cause high demand on the wood. But Perhaps not impossible, though who knows if it would still be around if Korra had to come back. So if it wasn't obvious, uh, leaving the best for last, let's talk about a structural steel system. Maybe it's my experience in practice that's leaning on the scale, but this would be my system of choice. And sure, you replace steel with a lighter, more expensive material like aluminum, but Boeing has the market all tied up rebuilding their fleet, so what are you going to do? The main benefit of steel is its high strength to weight ratio, which is comparable to wood, but since it weighs significantly more, could do a better job at supporting both a stone veneer and concrete flooring with fewer members, thus better mimicking the architectural expression of the Western Air Temple. <laughs> Did you forget that's what this video is about? It's been a while since I mentioned it. Now we've talked about some connection hanging from the cave roof and its importance to the design, so how might that be done? Structural attachments can come in the form of screw anchors, expansion bolts that lock themselves in with an expanding mechanism, but something that would be strong enough to hold up a whole building from the Western Air Temple would probably need to be a high-strength epoxy anchor. Now, that's what I typically use when attaching to concrete, and we can expect the rocky cave roof to behave somewhat similarly, even if the structural properties of rock can be much more varied. And one other method I've read about, I've just seen called rock anchors, which, I mean, yeah. Anyways, uh, these were used in a slender high-rise in New York to resist overturning during a heavy wind event and extended over 160 feet from the surface to the bedrock. Could the tech be installed upside down? Uh, I'm not sure, but this seems as good an idea as any. So how could they build this? Uh, sorry, that's mean to methods. Now, it wouldn't be too crazy to cantilever some scaffolding from the ground surface above uh, around and under the rocky overhang to act as a working surface, I've seen similar proposals before for conditions on a much smaller scale. <laughs> you know, but I guess that might make steel member installation a little difficult, so maybe I've convinced myself to go back to the wooden Western Air Temple, whatever. To put a bow on this investigation, what is it then that makes this type of construction so impossible? Like, if there aren't any examples even remotely resembling the hanging air temple, is it just cost? 
I mean, with most novel structures, there is significant added research and design cost, as well as added material for more comfortable factors of safety. But as noted with the building materials, I think we could design something of this order without too much deviation from standard materials. Uh, now, are we just that uncomfortable with anchoring to rock in tension? I mean, the rock anchors we noted for the New York high rise aren't there to keep the building standing, it's just for controlling the amount of sway during wind loading for comfortability. But rock anchors are also used to support retaining walls, which is a failure critical element, so maybe that's not it. Perhaps it's general uncomfortability with the structural strength of a rock formation, though that could be overcome by taking dozens of chord samples in a pattern that would allow for confidence in the strength. So the final meditative thought then probably lands back on constructability. The difficulty in getting a working surface around and under, while probably possible, would be a novel undertaking that might be hard to get insurance for. Or maybe there just aren't many suitable overhangs like this out there that would warrant the price tag. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Whew. Well, thanks for bearing with me on this ridiculous journey to, from, in and around the Avatar The Last Airbender's Western Air Temple. If you have any examples of crazy hanging structures or ideas on how it could be built, uh, drop a comment below. And if you like the video, come check out the channel. Got more like it over there. Thanks again, and adios.